Properly planted trees offer a great deal of satisfaction and aesthetic appreciation to the person planting and caring for them. Trees in the landscape reduce heating and cooling budgets, increase your home's value, and make selling a home easier. Trees are also valuable for adding privacy and attracting wildlife to the neighborhood. With new trees, the care taken at planting and in the early years will determine what the tree looks like at maturity and how well it survives. It is always important to match the cultural conditions on the site with those of the type of tree or shrub to be planted. Consider not only where the plant will look good, but also where it will grow successfully. Be sure the tree or shrub will be able to reach full maturity without growing into overhead wires, buildings, fences, other plants, driveway areas, etc. Choose a site where soil is deep, fertile, and well-drained. Trees and shrubs growing in soils poorly drained due to compaction, high clay content, or rot near the surface will have problems with surface roots, lack of hardiness, poor leaf color, and fall color, limited stem growth, limited flowering, and diseases and insects. Since poor drainage and improper planting are responsible for many planting failures, consider doing a simple PERT test to test your drainage before planting. Dig a hole in the yard about 12 inches deep by 12 inches wide and fill it with water. Continue to check on it for the next 24 hours. If the test hole drains in 3 or 4 hours, you probably have good drainage in that location. 5 to 12 hours means moderate drainage. Consider other options if it does not drain within 12 hours. Container-grown trees are well established and may be kept easily until planting time as long as they receive a daily watering. They are less expensive to ship because they are grown in lightweight artificial soil. Another advantage is that the root system is completely intact because the plant has been grown in a container since it was a seedling. One disadvantage is that once planted in the landscape, roots are often slow to break out of the artificial mix into native soil. Also, artificial mixes dry out much more rapidly than surrounding soil. For this reason, it is advantageous to remove some of the artificial mix from around the roots. As you plant it, work some of the native soil in and around the exposed roots. Bald and burlap trees and shrubs have a greater water holding capacity and may require less frequent irrigation. They also have a more similar soil to the planting site than the artificial mix in containers. The root system of bald and burlap trees are cut when dug in the nursery and will have to regrow once planted in your landscape. B&B plants are heavy and the weight makes the plant difficult to handle. While it may be easier, don't move these plants by lifting with the trunk. This will damage the roots. Wide, shallow holes encourage horizontal root growth that trees and shrubs naturally produce. Dig a planting hole no deeper than the root ball is tall and two to three times as wide as the root ball. In most soils, 90% of the actively absorbing root tips are located within 12 inches of the soil surface. So it's important to create a soil environment surrounding a new tree where roots can easily grow near the surface. Roots must be able to penetrate all sides of the planting hole, but if the surface is glazed, like a clay pot, most of the roots approaching this layer will be unable to grow through it. This is a common problem when digging in clay soils that are too wet or when using mechanical equipment like augers. Simply scoring the walls with a shovel will help break this glazed surface. Plastic containers must be removed from the root ball prior to planting. Tap the container on the bottom and sides to loosen it from the soil ball. Bald and burlap trees, especially those in wire baskets, offer an additional concern. Some burlap is synthetic and will not rot in the ground, therefore the tree's roots will not be able to grow through. If you're unable to tell if the burlap is synthetic, it should be removed from the ball. Even biodegradable burlap should be cut back away from the top of the ball. Metal baskets, string, twine, and wire should be removed completely to prevent girdling of the trunk or roots. If the root ball is so large that there is a danger that it will break, remove these materials after the tree has been placed in the planting hole. This should not be a problem in a planting hole dug two or three times as wide as the soil ball. Locate the root flare, that portion where the trunk becomes roots. For some trees, it may be necessary to probe into the top of the root ball and remove the excess soil to expose the flare. When the root ball is placed in the planting hole, the trunk flare should be at or slightly above the soil grade. Trees planted with the flare and roots too deep may be lost to compaction and lack of oxygen. Inspect the tree's roots for broken or kinked roots. These should be pruned and removed past the point of damage to avoid potential root rotting fungi. Circling roots may eventually girdle the trunk. To prevent this, the mass of roots that encircle the container should be cut or disturbed by pulling them apart and spreading them out into the planting hole. 
This action prevents continued circling that can later develop into girdling roots. Using a sharp knife, make vertical cuts one inch deep at four to six different locations around the root ball. If a mistake is made in tree planting, it is usually planting too deep. If the hole is dug too deep, soil must be added to the bottom of the planting hole, but make sure that the soil is well packed. After you put the tree or shrub in the planting hole, place some soil around the roots until the hole is half full. Tamp lightly and water thoroughly. After water is filtered down and settled to soil, fill the remainder of the hole and finish by watering. Generally, the best thing to put back in the planting hole is the same soil that came out of it. Soil amendments are expensive, difficult to mix evenly, and do little to help the plant establish itself in its new location. Allow the plant to remain in its new site for a year before fertilizing. Plants generally do better if allowed to recover from the initial shock of transplanting before fertilizer is applied. Adding a layer of mulch three inches deep will help control weeds and conserve soil moisture. Mulch also keeps lawn mowers and string trimmers from getting too close to the plant. Avoid overly deep mulching or piling the mulch up against the trunk. This promotes shallow roots, disease, and pest injury. Newly transplanted trees are often wrapped as a routine practice with one of the commercially available wrapping materials to protect their thin bark from sun scald. Research indicates that sun scald occurs on young trees with severed or crowded roots because they are not able to take up sufficient amounts of water. Wraps help reflect sunlight and add an extra layer of insulation against sudden temperature changes that can occur in winter. Begin wrapping at the base of the trunk and continue up to the first branches. Overlap each of the previous layers so that the water will be shed. Wrap trees during the fall after planting and remove the wrap the following spring. Transplanted trees can experience considerable water stress. Watering, then, is the single most important thing you can do for a newly transplanted tree. Trees not receiving one to two inches of rainfall per week will need supplementary watering during the first year after transplanting. In fact, you will need to continue regular watering for three years because trees and shrubs may take that long to become fully established in a landscape. 